Okay, let's unpack this. Imagine creating entire cinematic scenes and, I mean, like, dynamic camera work, expressive characters, all just from an audio track and maybe a few text cues. That's the sort of revolutionary promise we're diving into today. We're looking at Juan S2V. So Juan 2.2 has updated its suite of models to now also include speech to video. Using an audio clip and a reference still image, I was able to generate this 15 second video in one shot using an RTX 4060 laptop GPU with 8 gigs of VRAM. The default workflow is a bit messy and looks complicated, but I'll break it down step by step. Let's get into it. Okay, first thing we'll need are the GGUF models for the WAN 2.2 S2V. So going into the Quantstack page, they already have the GGUFs. For the normal WAN 2.2, I used to use the Q4. So for this one, I started off with the Q4KS as well, since that's the smallest size of the Q4s. It runs without issue on 8 gigs of VRAM for me, but if I push it past 480 by 480 resolution, it starts to take up more than the VRAM I have available, so it'll start slowing down the generations. If I wanted to make a portrait video 480 by 640 I would probably step down to the Q3 just to make sure I stay on VRAM for the whole generation. But you can experiment with either Q3, Q4, or step it up if you have more VRAM. Then the next set of files you can get from the Comfy UI wiki. A couple of new ones if you haven't worked with uh, audio to video before. So you'll need this audio encoder. The VAE is the regular one that you use with WAN 2.2. Text encoder is also the same as the one from WAN 2.2. So just get the files that you're missing and put them in the correct locations. The last file that you need that you may already have is the uh, Light X2V LoRa. So for the S2V, I think the recommendation is to use the text to video uh, version of the LoRa. So in the Light X2V Hugging Face page, using version 1.1, you can grab the T2V version um, high noise model. And then just make sure you rename it uh, using the name here. That's generally what I do. And then save it in the LoRa folder. And that's it. Okay, coming back into the Comfy UI page, it does look a bit crazy, but just uh, make sure you follow along. It's not as complicated as it may seem in the beginning. All of these connectors and wires are just really duplicated because there's multiple case samplers. So that's why you see so many versions and so many lines going across, but I'll try and explain it as best I can. As always, before you start, just make sure you're on the latest version of Comfy UI. You can also grab the default uh, template from Comfy UI itself, and that's one good way to check to see if you have the right version. So inside Comfy UI, browse templates, and then video. You should have one called WAN 2.2 S2V. I've taken that one and just added a few different nodes to enable GGUFs. And then also the video combines and a few other things that I'll get into to make it a little bit easier. Okay, so starting from the load models, I've replaced the load diffusion with the UNet loader so that you can load the GGUF. So put the quant version that you had um, and then just select it here. Then the load clips, it's the same text encoder that you downloaded. Just make sure you have one uh, device's default or CPU. VAE is 1.2.1. And then lastly, the audio encoder is the one that you downloaded from the Comfy UI page. So all of this still looks quite normal. Then the model goes through the LoRa model loader. So this one will load the uh, Lightning LoRa, the Light X2V Lightning LoRa. Make sure you put that in there. I use strength of one. I tried increasing it and the results were pretty bad. Like you get pretty heavy distortion if you increase it past one. So just leave it at the default. That goes into the shift node. Still pretty similar to just general WAN 2.2. And then that goes into the first case sampler. So I'll, I'll stop here before going on to the extension. Then next, if we look at the, the clips and the prompts. So the text encoders get loaded into the prompts. You have your usual positive and negative. The negative is not used if you're using the LoRa. So don't worry about this one. But your positive prompt is where you put your, your prompt. Then from here, your positive conditioning goes into one of the new nodes. The WAN sound image to video. And that goes into the positive. Your negative prompt goes into the negative. And that's it for the prompts. And then from the WAN sound image to video, you have the positive and negative prompt going into the K samplers positive and negative. So that's it for the prompt connections. Then we have the VAE. So the VAE gets connected to the WAN sound image to video again. And then the others connect further on, which I'll show you later. The next items on the WAN sound image to video are slightly new. So you have a reference image just like one image to video, but then you also have an audio encoder where you put the audio file. So you set your reference audio and image down here in the step two here. You can select your audio file and then it'll tell you how long that audio clip is. You can choose to generate the whole clip or you can cut it um, depending on how, how much of it you want. And then secondly, you have your regular load image. So just a standard image loader. 
I'm just going to bring the audio encode here a little bit closer so it's easier to see. But for the audio, you have your audio encoder that you downloaded. That gets connected to the audio encoder encode node. And then the audio file itself gets plugged into the audio. So the two of those get fed into this node. And then the output from the encoder and the audio, that goes into the audio encoder output. Not sure why it says output. I think this should have been input, but um, these two connect together. So now your WAN sound image to video also has an audio input. And then again, for the same thing for the image, I'm just going to move it over here for a second. But your reference image, I've put it into a uh, image resize, so specifically for WAN. So WAN video image resize the closest. For my GPU and VRAM, I use 480 by 480 to generate the videos, and then I can upscale it later. But set the resolution however you like, and then just crop to new um, so that your picture gets cropped in the middle to whatever your new resolution is. And then there's a mess of wires coming out of here, but it's not that complicated. The image gets plugged into the reference image for one sound image to video. And then you also plug in the width and height into the width and height part of the one sound image to video. This way you can change your generation resolution uh, without doing it twice. Then the final output for the one sound image to video is this, is this length field. This length field is set from this node here called chunk length. In WAN 2.2, this would have been the amount of frames that you're trying to generate. So for a five second video, I think it was 81 frames. The default for WAN STV looks like it's 77 frames. So it's just slightly less than five seconds. So it'll do 4.8 seconds, I think it is, at a time. And then you can extend it, which is what I'll get into afterwards, um, by another 4.8 seconds and another 4.8 seconds until you can cover however long your audio is or however long you, you want your clip to be. But by default, that's 77 uh, frames. And then this gets fed into all the different uh, K samplers after. Um, so you don't have to repeat it. So that's why there's so many wires. But this gets fed into the first one here. Uh, and then that should be the last one. Then we move from the WAN sound image to video. That gets connected to the K sampler. So your positive and negative prompt goes into the K samplers, positive and negative. And then your latent from all of this gets plugged into the latent image on the K-sampler side. Then inside the K-sampler, you have your seed. Uh, you have your steps in CFG, which is taking as a variable right now, so you're not setting it on your own. Then you have your sampler. So I've stuck with Euler, Scheduler Simple, and then Denoise at 1. The steps in CFG, these are set using a variable because they get repeated after on the STV extension. Um, so I think that instead of just setting them all independently, and maybe you have a mistake in one of them, the default Comfy UI workflow has the steps in CFG down here. So you just set it once, and then it gets plugged into three or four different uh, different nodes. So from here, it's four, and then CFG is one. Okay. So that's the usual. Usually the, the one 2.2 video generation would kind of end here, and you do a, a decode and then save the video. But there's a couple of, but the one benefit for STV is that you can extend the video to the length of your audio. And they do that with this uh, video STV extend node. And there's multiple versions of it. So basically, your K sampler does the first 77 uh, frame chunk. It passes that to the next extension node. The extension node takes all the same inputs as your initial one, which is why there's like duplicate wires coming into all of these, but it's the same ones. So your, your model, so the model wire coming out of the shift gets hooked into all the different video S2V extends. And that's what causes all the different uh, wires to be shown. So they all get plugged into the same model. The positive and negative prompt are, are also the same from the positive and negative in the conditioning. So that's why those are duplicated into the, all the same ones as well. The VAE also gets plugged in to the same one. The video latent input takes the latent from the output of the K sampler. So your initial block, that gets fed into here. Your audio encoder, reference image, steps, CFG, and how many frames to do on the second extension. All these are fed from the same ones as before. So they all get plugged in uh, three times extra. So how you use the extension is if your video was 4.8 seconds, you can leave it as one block. And you don't even need these ones, so you can just bypass all of them. So here, for example, my video is 9 seconds. 
I know I need two blocks. So 4.8 seconds plus 4.8 seconds will cover that nine seconds. So I do need a second one. So I enable it. All of this is plugged in with the same things already. You just need to make sure your sampler and scheduler are the same as the first K sampler. And I know with these two blocks, I can generate almost 10 seconds of video. If my video was 15 seconds, then I would enable another one. Right, that would give me just less than 15 seconds. So I might have to even enable a fourth uh, to get it over to exactly 15 seconds. So that's how you would calculate how many blocks of these video extensions you need. Then once you know how many extension blocks you need, you need to adjust one more thing. And that's the batch size here. And there's a note that Comfy UI leaves on this workflow, which I'll leave here as well. Basically, you just need to count how many total nodes that you have um, and set that as a value. So if you only had one K sampler, that would just be one. If you added one extension, you would have a total of two. So one K sampler plus one extension, and you would have two. So put the value two in here. And then if you use all four, uh, then set it to four. And this batch size node gets fed all the way to the very end here, uh, where it stitches everything back up together. So the last bit I'll explain is this panel here, where it says fix overbaked first image. Without this, you'll notice in the generations that the first frame is a little bit distorted. Um, it's also very saturated. And then after a couple of frames uh, in the beginning, it settles down to your reference image and it looks more like the reference image and then it's fine afterwards. The people testing on Comfy UI also saw this. So they put in this here to help fix that problem. So it'll just strip out the, the initial bad frames and then, um, and then save the output video without them. So at the end of the extension, these get plugged into these latent concatenations and cuts. I'm not entirely sure what, what they're doing to how they're doing it to remove that first frame, but, um, all of them get fed into the latent cut, latent concatenate, and then the output of that goes into the VAE decode. The VAE decode also gets the VAE uh, connected to it. And then from there, the latent gets turned into a real image. The image gets batched up together from the batch index. And then all of the images are fed into the video combine. The original audio is also fed back into the video combine. So now you have uh, the original source audio. And then from here, you set your normal frame rate, 16 frames per second, and then save the it as a video file. Is shining bright. Pack your bags. Okay, and that's it with the workflows. Let's jump into a couple of samples that I've generated and see how they look. Okay, let's unpack this. Imagine creating entire cinematic scenes and, I mean, like, dynamic camera work, expressive characters, all just from an audio track and maybe a few text cues. So back on the intro video so back on the intro video that was generated using audio from notebook lm uh to generate a podcast and then i fed that with the the reference image of the man in the in the water and then one 2.2 put that video together i find that when you're closer to the face or if you have a better cleaner shot of the face it does get better other than just talking a lot of people also use it for for song generations and it's able to do that too so here's another sample Sun. It's shining bright. Pack your bags, let's go. So that second one with the song, uh, it's a little bit closer up of the woman's face. The generation is much clearer. The mouth movements are a little bit clearer, um, and the lip sync is just a little bit better as well. So I think if possible, you if you have a close up of the face, it's pretty good. Here's another example of two sections of the same song, but using the same uh, reference image to start with. Sun is shining bright. Pack your bags, let's go feel the summer light Chasing dreams, you know Oh, we're flying high underneath the sky Summer nights and days in so many ways The camera is a little bit further away, but there's movement uh, in her hands playing the guitar. So all of that seems quite natural. And when it's from that view, the lip sync is not so bad. So hopefully that gives you an idea of for you to experiment with, with what uh, 12.2 S2V is about. If you found the video helpful, give it a like and hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one.